Welcome to another edition of Doctor to Doctor in the chat room. I am here with my guests, uh, Mr. Stephen Joaquin, Ms. Takitha Chambers, Mr. Leon Gray, and Mrs. Randy Scott Howard. And we're going to have some girl talk and guy talk today. Uh, I promised you that I would get these people in the room together and we would have some discussions surrounding uh, relationships and Although um, they have introduced themselves to the audience before, I'd like for them to just give a brief introduction, if they would, uh, for the people that weren't able to listen in on last time, and just tell us a little bit about your background, who you are, your status. Oh, I'm Stephen Joaquin. Uh, I'm from Miami, Florida originally. I've uh, been in Memphis about 10 years now. i married, going on five years, and... That's about it. Okay. And to keep the chambers, I am a nurse by trade. I'm married. I've been married for 16 years with two children and a dog. <laughs> I'm Leon Gray, uh, probably the oldest member of the panel. Uh, I am divorced. I have four sons from, I guess, ages 35 to 18. Uh, and um, I'm glad to be here. Awesome, glad to have you. Good afternoon, I'm Randy Scott Howard. I'm a Mississippi native. I have resided here in Tennessee uh, the past 20 years. I'm married now 23 years with a family of three. We have two girls and a boy, ages 22 to 18. And I'm an educator by trade. And I too am very happy to be here. And I'm glad to have all of you. Um, one of the first questions that I asked on both shows last time was like, what, what is a soulmate? And so before we move into anything else, um, I really want to hear because when, when we did the guy talk show, soulmate was different. It varied from show to show. And, um, so did a couple of other things that I'm going to talk about a little later in the show and hear the different perspectives. But just give me just briefly what a soulmate is to you guys. Jump in, anybody? I think uh, last time I talked about uh, the soulmate being the per person who's designed uh, with your purpose in mind, designed by God with your purpose in mind. Yeah. And I think I, for me, some people say they know they're a soulmate, but for me and my spouse, I think he became my soulmate over time. Mm -hmm. He has grown to be my soulmate. And Leon, I know you had a different perspective. Well, just what she said. I, I think it's a work in progress from the time that people become attracted to one another uh, generally visually and then other things after that, that the work then begins to agree to work on being one another's soulmate. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of doing all of that, what you end up doing is trying to agree more often than you disagree about what, what you're going to do towards being a soulmate for your mate. Okay. It's a work in progress, I promise you. Yeah, I, I can I can definitely piggyback on that. It's uh it's not something I think that's uh, generally found in the beginning, but something that's worked towards. Mm -hmm. And then um, whatever you may call it, whether it's uh, ideologies or just same perspectives of life, kind of line up, and yeah. then you guys begin to work uh, towards things for each other, mm -hmm. and in turn, you know, definitely finding your soulmate in the process because a soulmate definitely isn't something that's just kind of out there. It's something that's found. Probably the question that had the greatest variance was the one about submission. Um, I heard something, a totally different perspective when I talked to the guys. Uh, so just for the sake of this discussion, I'd like to start with the guys as it relates to submission and then to move on to the ladies and tell your perspective on submission. It's a, it's a, I think it varies with the couples. Uh, I don't think there's a standard uh, 
definition of submission submission that's one size fits all. I just don't. Uh, because people are different. But I do believe from a male's perspective that more often than not, men would tend to believe that women were, are to be the more submissive partner in the relationship uh, all the time. I, I don't, I'm a card carrying member of the male chauvinist pig club. And I don't mind saying that. Uh, biblically speaking, men who are following God are to be the leader of the home. Mm -hmm. And the woman is to follow his lead. And I just believe that. I, I think we got out of kilter in society, not just in relationships, when uh, women had to take on men's roles. I'm not blaming women for doing things that men are not doing. But we got out of kilter when men, when men weren't doing what they were supposed to do and women had to take on men's roles. Mm -hmm. So getting back into kilter, I think, will involve men stepping back up and being leaders. And then women would be more submissive to yeah. a man who was actually a leader. So, Stephen, you had a really interesting perspective. Uh, would you share yours, please? Uh, okay, well... In, in today's term, submissiveness has changed a whole lot. Uh, like you said, it, it used to be one where if you led, you know, someone will come to you to lead. Uh, but now again, it's uh, more of finding your yin to your yang. Um, it's not always about who's in charge. Uh, it's not always about who's right, who's wrong, who's taking you in the right direction. Uh, but it's also about doing it together. And along the way of doing it together, you will find out who is submissive and who is not per se, um, and generally, um, most women tend to want to push the man into that role anyway, just like he said, most men don't amount to it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so first, um, I do think that there is a clear definition of submission given scripturally, and so I won't argue with that. And though the way society promotes submission and how the Bible acts, requires us to submit are so far apart. Mm -hmm. I think that in my marriage, together, Stephen, there are times when my husband leads us and there are times when I lead us. And so to your and so to your point, because of my background or schooling in education, he really relied on my expertise and understanding mm -hmm. while we made the decisions ultimately together, he trusted me to do that. And in our home and in our relationship, he's better with money management. And so that's where he leads our family in the decisions around money matters, but we make the final decisions together. Mm -hmm. Never one person makes all decisions. Exactly. Not making all of the decisions. And I think that there's in that there had to be a healthy respect for the other's area of strength. Yeah. And that's why I believe even going back to what a soulmate means, mm -hmm. it's we were designed for each other. His strengths are areas that I'm particularly weak in and my strengths are areas where he may not be quite as strong either. And so together we make a whole. Make your yin yeah. to your yang. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. But wouldn't submission be, or being submissive be defined as if there's a decision that's got to be made in the household, the ultimate decision would lie in the leadership role exclusively with the male? Yes, but how, how are you to get to that position if you don't have the information? And if she has the information, how do you obtain that from her? Very good. It's no point. different from being a boss. Yeah, I could, I'm in charge, but if my workers don't give me the information, how can I make a sound decision? And that's, I think, what decision is. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I'm still liable to make the last final decision. It's my say-so. Whenever I say go, I'm probably gonna take the heat for whatever goes right, whatever goes wrong. But at the end of the day, I still have to lean on her. And so biblically, I believe that the Lord called us 
called the man to lead the family spiritually. Like it is his responsibility unto God the Father to move his family um, toward relationships with Christ, their personal relationships. And so mm -hmm. he's, he's obligated if he's under God's headship, then I can trust that in him. True. When he's not, you, you know, I'm, I have to trust Push God it. that he'll get my husband right. off, you know, on that side. But, you know, you, you don't necessarily, I don't fear, even when I think I'm being misled, even right. by my husband, because I trust God ultimately to give, you know, to correct wrong turns and right wrongs and that you kind of thing. So that's what I've time. always said. I've always said, you know, speaking biblically. You know, God did not intend for us to submit to a knucklehead, right? And so when it comes down to it, and if the, the head is making a decision or whatever, and we've discussed it, all right, and whatever decision he makes, right or wrong, I can believe that he did have Your the best in, interest <laughs> of the family at heart, right? Because God would not want me to submit to not, not to get off that. subject <clears throat> not to get off subject but honestly and truthfully um the term or the notion of being submissive is earned that's a lot of things people kind of jump in past submission. in submission itself it's like hey i understand you want me to be this way but you haven't even taken the correct steps to lead me down this path so i can trust you you know i can't just put a blindfold on across the street with you if you don't even know these roads yourself mm -hmm. so you have to prove to me just as much as i have to prove to you that, hey, I know what I'm doing, and with that being said, you will follow me. And if I do mess up, hey, we messed up together. We both put in our input. This didn't work out. Let's right. So there's see. no blame. There's really no blame. Right. This is just us kind of being combative. But, yes, I have the final say so, so on and so forth. But, yeah, like I said, that position is earned. Mm -hmm. A lot of people kind of skip that part. But James Brown said, "You gotta pay the cost to be the boss." That, and but so it, so you gotta I, earn everything you do. How did you earn the money to pay that cost? You know, what, what what time did you earn in to be the boss? It's, you like to cut me off, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you get away with that two times. The third time, I'm gonna snap. Oh, oh, oh so, just so you know. <laughs> but as I was saying, it, 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 there's no way to have this conversation realistically without talking about finances. And in this society, uh, women are pretty much uh, in, the, in, the working, in the workforce. They're, they're earning their own money. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance in the house of the budget based on two salaries. Biblically speaking, there was one breadwinner. So if we're gonna start talking about leadership from a biblical perspective, the man was taking care of everything and the lady was taking care of things inside the home. She was not going outside the home to make a living. So in the modern day society, there's, there's a balance there for that reason. Because when, I'm sitting around professional women, women who work, women who have degrees. Who are bosses. And who are bosses. My age. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so the whole perspective of submission is changed because of the roles that have changed mm -hmm. in our society. It makes sense. I don't, I don't think, though, that the role that's just, because I, I have to work, honestly, Leon, at, at not succumbing to, to, my, to the world mindset. Okay. Because um, while women sometimes in our community, our community, have a higher probability to earn more. Whether we take charge or not, oftentimes our spouses or mates find it difficult to deal with the woman when she earns as much or more. And so despite her best efforts, sometimes the roles are reversed in that way financially. But you can strike a good balance when, when you understand that it's coming together for the good of the, the home and not one person to gain some kind of dominion over the other. And I'm certain that that's not what's 
scripture and sure. the definition of submission means. And so I, I can subscribe to that um, to, a, to a point. Um, I, I really didn't think we were going to spend this much time on submission, and it, honestly, it's okay. It's totally okay. But I want us to take about two or three minutes uh, before we go to break, and let's talk a little bit about um, how do you, what do you see as the most important aspects of a relationship? What, you know, what what parts would you highlight as just crucial to the success of a relationship? Communication. Communication. Talking <coughs> all the time. Yeah. Because I like to dialogue with my husband mm -hmm. a lot. So yeah. I think that helps us. I'm going to say uh, comprehension is, is more than anything. We communicate a lot. Um, <clears throat> me and my wife talk about any and everything. But um, I feel like it's it falls on deaf ears if you don't understand what's being told to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, communication itself can be frivolous if no one's trying to understand or just listening to respond rather than okay. listening to understand. Mm -hmm. So I think commu uh, above communication really is comprehension mm -hmm. um, as one of the most uh, important parts of a relationship. And comprehension is a part of, commu of communication. communication. You know, that's that's a part of the right. process. Just, and I totally just get it. And when you say we talk, you dialogue with your husband a lot, you know, I get it because I often say, you know, you got to be able to talk, like, talk when things are good, mm -hmm. you know, talk about whatever, because, you know, sometimes when things are a little tense, maybe you cannot clearly convey what it is that you feel or whatever, and maybe you've gotten a chance to say some of those things, and those things get instilled in that, for, for instance, how much I love you, right? So that when I am upset, or I am, you know what I mean, uh, maybe that person can remember <laughs> in the moment, you know, but you talk about everything, and I, I think people tend to think communication is about resolution, and it's not, it doesn't always have to be about resolving things, it's just about learning. being open and, and yeah, learning. Really, all it's, mm -hmm. all, it's always ever been about, it's all learning. Mm -hmm. So I would say to your point, I think understanding forgiveness and grace mm. are necessary. Being willing to give grace, being willing to receive it. There's a humanity in understanding and in forgiving, like understanding that from your perspective, you fail. Mm -hmm. mm. And so when they fail, how do you, how do you handle that? How do you manage? And so, um, for me, self-management is paramount. Mm. It's the most important thing because I cannot control anyone else, their response Absolutely. to any situation. Mm -hmm. And so, how I manage me is important in how the we process. keep mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. yeah. two, two things that are mutually exclusive. I don't think you can have one without the other. Trust and integrity. Mm -hmm. The integrity piece is that you are pure gold until you're not. So you own your own integrity and that's that's what creates trust. Where, we, where you have discourse is when the trust breaks down and your word is no longer gold. Because your word is your bond. That's the only thing we got in a relationship and in society as a whole. So in a relationship especially, when a person is let down because they were led to believe one thing mm. and another thing happens, then the trust factor has broken down because your integrity has broken down for whatever reason. So if, if we end up uh, in a discourse, it's generally because it's going to be because one of the two of us is hurt because of one of us doing something that makes us less than perfect that time. Mm -hmm. What you do after that, what you do after that has a lot to do with whether you heal or continue to hurt in quiet, mm -hmm. in secrecy. And those are the things that destroy relationships when you say you've gotten over something that you really haven't gotten over. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if the integrity can't be restored to the level that trust is restored, then that has to be worked on. And communication, as it has been said, is the key to doing that. But you can't keep doing the same thing you did that broke the integrity the first time and expect for that whole thing to fix itself. Just won't. Yeah. Just won't. 
All right, so we're gonna we're gonna come back after break and talk a little bit uh, more, maybe maybe an extension of the communication thing before we move on to something else. We'll be right back on ninety four point seven FM. 